Hello everyone, today we will be unboxing and testing the Spider Farmer SE3000. This is how the box came from Amazon. Uh, it was a box inside of another box. So this is the actual box packed up by Spider Farmer, I believe. Uh, and when you get in it, right off the bat, we have a cable for daisy chaining controls, some wire hangers, and some ratcheting straps. There's also some end caps and other screws to tighten things down. Power cable. And then next in the box is the power supply, which is a Meanwell power supply. It does come with a manual. And then here I'm pulling out the bars, and you can see the light comes disassembled. So the next step is to assemble it. Here are the pieces that the light bars actually plug into. You can see in these white sockets there's no receptacle, but in these on the other bar there is an actual electronic receptacle. So you want to make sure that you are plugging your light bar into the correct side. And the side with the receptacle does have the power cable coming out of it as well, so that should make it easier. So once you get them all plugged in, you put on the top caps. You can see here it is a little fiddly to get everything lined up properly. But once you do it, um, it's pretty simple. And then you connect everything down with these orange screws. The last step for building the frame is to add these white caps on the end. And then finally you can attach the power supply to the top. As you can see here, I'm really struggling with attaching this cable. Um, there was a tiny little plastic switch that said open or close on one side, and it didn't work very well for me, but ultimately I got it connected. To attach the power supply, you kind of spread out these legs and then clamp them in with or lock the legs in with those white screws and then clamp them in with these black screws. You definitely have to screw down pretty hard. They don't really mate with anything, so it's really just a friction fit. Um, as you can see here, it's just kind of pushing against the side. It's a little worrisome because your instinct is to grab this by the power supply when you pick it up, but that is definitely not a strong enough connection. Okay, on to the features of this light. This is a Meanwell power supply, uh, 300 watts. The control panel is simple with an on-off button, control connectors, and a brightness knob. Here you can see the protective coating they've applied over the LED panel. And here is the LED colors, giving it a color temperature of 3300 Kelvin. The light hangs pretty simply with two ratchet straps that connect to these four bolt locations on the frame. Alright, on to testing. After 30 minutes of powered on, the power draw from the wall is 267 watts. The temperature of the back of one of the LED strips is 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And the back of the power supply is 114 degrees Fahrenheit. As a point of comparison, the ambient temperature of the garage I'm in is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And here I'm taking readings with the Apogee Quantum PAR meter. And here are the results. As you can see, my hanging height was 18 inches. My coverage area was 3 foot by 3 foot. I had an average PPFD of 652 giving me a total PPF of 592. With my power draw of 267 watts, I get an efficiency measured in PPF per watt of 2.22. This is pretty good. I would consider this a highly efficient light. Anything over two is considered very efficient. And with the average PPFD of 652, that puts you squarely in the middle of the fruiting and flowering range. So you could grow a fruiting and flowering plant 
in this three foot by three foot area. And if you're only looking for vegetative growth, you could get uh, a higher hanging height and a larger area, maybe up to five foot by five foot. So I can definitely recommend this light for fruiting and flowering plants. Um, all right, that covers this review. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.